Greetings from Budo, Norway. In today's episode, we are going to drive across Norway and Sweden on our way back to Finland. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV. Many people have suggested we visit several things here in Bodo and it looks very interesting but today's episode is not going to be like a comprehensive guide of Norway and Sweden. Uh, what's left of today and tomorrow really are going to be basically mostly travel days so we can return to Finland, get closer to our final destination so we can slow down a little bit and explore a little bit more. Of course, I will show you some things along the way and it will be fun and interesting visiting yet another country, Sweden. Here we are. We've been going around this lake for a while now. It looks like a lake, but it's really a fjord. It's Saltdal fjord. And here we have another one of these tall and skinny, beautiful waterfalls, so common here in Norway. Approaching some mountains, this is going to get interesting. Yep, we have some pretty impressive peaks coming up here. This is where we turn off the E6 and take a detour towards Sweden. 10% grades ahead and they are building a tunnel, but who knows when that will be finished. Wow, check it out, a rainbow! Not only one, but two, double rainbow in the sky, all the way! And it is gone. And here we are, 
at the border. Of course, nowadays you don't have to stop, although they still have the old customs building. I'm just hoping they have a decent sign for me to take a picture. Yeah, it doesn't look like much, but hey, here we are. Well, according to Google Translate, it says uh, Swedish uh, border, so we are in Sweden now. And we continue our journey. It's beautiful up here in the mountains, very cold. Oof. That's Norway. That's Sweden, and, and Finland is a little further away. Oof. And the next I'm going to Google what this uh, means right here, this monument. Well, all I could find is that Carl Gustav is the current king of Sweden. We are also back in the European Union. Not yet in the Eurozone though, they use Swedish kroners and we don't have any cash in the local currency. I tried to stop back there at the EU sign with the 12 stars, but I didn't think there was enough shoulder to stop safely, so we decided to continue. You're not gonna believe where we are. Take a guess. Well. The Arctic Circle, of course. According to Google, this means Arctic Circle, so we are once again south of the Arctic Circle. It might get dark at night again. Well, it looks like this one now is the official sign, so here we are. Let's hit the road again. You know what's pretty mind-blowing? For the better part of this trip, we've been above the Arctic Circle way way up there so if you haven't seen it i do encourage you to watch from the beginning and here's where we're going to stay of all places probably the most remote we could find had we driven 58 more kilometers we would have been in a proper town with services but i don't feel like driving anymore by the way, it is kind of late, so the person in charge is not here, but I called and he said to park in the back, they have electrical hookups, and he would come in the morning to charge me for the campsite. And the reason we wanted to be near a larger town actually is because we are basically out of food, and there's nothing open in this small town. We should have driven those extra 58 kilometers. Actually, we should have boondocked, uh, but we need to do laundry also. And we thought a campground would be the way to go. This is where we're staying here in Sweden. It's like 8.30 p.m. and it's still daytime, you know. We're just a tad below the, the Arctic Circle here. It's a little bit of a strange place, it's like a hostel inside. And there's a chapel. I don't know. This is called the Lake Cottage. There's like a lounge area. There's a kitchen over there. And here we have a view of the lake. But what I'm really looking for is the laundry facilities. And that's where we are. Here they have two rooms marked Adam and Eve. Let me go into Adam's room and see what it's like inside. There's a kitchen and bunk beds. One thing for sure, it is very peaceful here. It almost feels like a sanctuary. 8.38 p.m. and the sun came out, and look at that. It's a picture. Perfect lake here. Hornavan Lake, I think it's called.
It is like an eternal sunset that goes on for hours. Time to go to sleep. Well, good morning. Well, we're doing some laundry here at this uh, campground. And this is how the dryer looks. Hmm. I've never used one of these before. That dryer took forever and very nicely decorated residences here in this small town. Ooh, and we had to come up with some cash because he didn't take credit cards. Luckily, the girl at the nearby gas station was very helpful and allowed us to get some cash back from our credit card purchase. Well, we are going back to Finland as we are starting to wind down our, our trip here in the, in the Nordic region of Europe. And of course, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. And uh, we actually packed too much uh, stuff. Too, too, the, the distances were actually uh, longer than, than I had anticipated. Uh, so it's been a little bit of a rushed trip. But you know, you're up here, and might as well go to the northernmost point, you know, see the midnight sun. And you're here around, I hear, I hear these uh, islands in Norway, Lofoten, are really cool. So let's go to Lofoten. And by the end, you know, we, we haven't been able to stay uh, for too long anywhere but anyway that also the purpose of this trip was to, to learn uh, how things work in the RV world here in Europe and it's been quite the, the learning experience the cassette toilet eh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be but uh, you know you, instead of seeing it through a piece of clear plastic you see it there in front of you things like that um, also, no two dump stations in, 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 in wherever we've been here in Europe. No, there are not two, they are the same. They're all a little different. Some take tokens, some are free, some are hole on the ground, some are, are like this sink basin uh, aluminum kind of thing. It's, um, it's been a learning experience for sure. Going to the supermarkets have, has been uh, both educational and uh, super, super interesting and very uh, stressful at times. Uh, one time we almost bought vinegar thinking it was oil because you know you don't understand the language and Google Translate is not always great. It's done pretty good with Finnish, it, uh, it's done okay with sw Swedish, with Norwegian it's like lost completely. Um, another thing, you know, everything takes a little longer than you expected. For example, at this campground we stayed here in, in Sweden, the only place we're gonna spend the night in Sweden, I think. Uh, we had to do some laundry and some, you know drying and, and the, 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 the washer takes an hour to, to, to do it and the dryer after two hours our, our clothes are still a, a little damp in fact we're drying some of the stuff back there on top of the bed see if it dries out things like that you know it's um, it's a learning experience overall, but, but it's, it's a cool learning experience because at some point in the future uh, we want to do this a little longer term and um, and also, I wanted to try if I liked uh, living in a motorhome since, as you know, in, in Florida, what we have is a travel trailer, mini in the trailer. And uh, it is cool. It is very cool to be able to, uh, to, to, to stop virtually anywhere and uh, if you find parking and, uh, and explore on a whim a new town, a city. And uh, even though this is a little on the longish side, this is a 25 footer, I think it's like almost seven meters in length, still. It's been uh, very nice and, uh, and now we have four more days in, in Finland, almost four more days. Uh, so uh, we're gonna try to explore uh, some of the towns along the coast and then maybe a little more of Helsinki. Oh, by the way, the people, for the most part, everybody very nice. And uh, most people speak English, maybe not perfect, but most people can, can, can communicate and that's uh, great. Uh, younger people seem to seem to speak it better like we, we just uh, went to the gas station and the, the, this young girl he spoke perfect almost perfect and the guy at the campground he was about my age 
and he, he spoke it well. By the way, this campground right here next to the Arctic Circle, or close to the Arctic Circle, um, he doesn't uh, he doesn't take uh, credit cards. So that's why we had to go to the gas station and get some cash, and we were able to get some cash out of our credit card. Uh, uh, this place where we stayed here in Sweden, it was uh, 200 kroners, and then five kroners for washing, five kroners for drying. 50. 50. 50 kroners for washing and 50 kroners for it's hard you know all these different uh, uh, points or um, monies you know we, 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 do have, we have Norwegian kroners Swedish kroners and now in Finland we're back to euros of course I want to thank Peter for lending me the motorhome it's been a, a great trip and uh, as I promised I'll bring it back in one piece This beautiful lake here on the side of the road. Yeah. Oh, the wind turbines. Not much wind today. This here is the town where we probably should have stopped for the night, last night. Besides this church, there are restaurants and gas stations and supermarkets. And it looks like here in Sweden, they have reindeer too, and lots of them on the side of the road. Some of them even on the road. Part of the road is undergoing some construction, which it's a delay and it makes for a tedious drive. Okay, there's no other way to put it. This part of Sweden here is not the most entertaining of drives, but we'll make it. Somewhere. Anywhere, eventually. The next town is called Luleå. A decent sized city with lots to see, but we are on a mission. Let's go shopping. Just like in Finland and Norway, if you want to buy alcohol in Sweden, you're stuck with the government's monopoly. And here it is called System Bolajet. Great selection. And some people were buying as if prohibition was coming to the Nordic countries any day soon. I mean, cases of beer. Let's also go to this hypermarket called Maxi Ika. I don't think people know how to park in this town. It's a Maxi Ika. Uh, gotta get some meatballs before we leave Sweden, right? I saw most people taking one of these electronic devices here on the right, and it seems to be like a membership program, like Costco kind of thing. Yeah, we couldn't leave Sweden without going to a supermarket. Besides it being my happy place, we've been to these types of hypermarkets in Finland and to some extent in Norway, so we have to come to this one as well. But uh, the good thing about having a motorized RV is that you can park at the grocery store. Just like, oh, be careful with the drivers, with the Swedish drivers, they're a little like the Miami drivers. So we went to the market and bought some Swedish meatballs, and I'm just gonna, you know, hit them up here. 
By the way, this kitchen doesn't doesn't hit up a lot. And we are marinating uh, also with some local IPA, Swedish IPA, and this sauce that we bought that it turned out to be stronger than we expected. But anyways, should be good. Before we leave Sweden, we had to have, you know, Swedish meatballs, right? We're getting close to the border. There's an old Volvo being towed. Found some quirky stuff on the side of the road. There's E.T. and his spaceship. And here we have a tank, probably from World War One. I. I don't know. This is pretty cool. We have this old biplane here. Here, just on the side of the road. It's like a military overstock or overscot. I don't know. Well, let's continue. Finland awaits. I actually missed those signs with the city skyline. Even though street signs and the iconography are very similar in all these three countries we have visited, I do think those city skyline signs are unique to Finland. Also, since this is where we started the trip, certainly things look very familiar like the gas stations and the Prisma supermarkets. It feels almost like coming home, if that makes any sense. In any case, it is the home of our RV here, which, as you probably know by now, we decided to name Savonia. By the way, this is the small city of Kemi. And this here is the Kemi Church, which is of the Finnish Evangelical Lutheran denomination. Kemi is actually really famous for his Sampo Icebreaker, which is a giant ship that can cruise the Arctic waters, and that would have been really cool if there was any ice on the water right now. There is also a famous ice castle, which by this time of the year has unfortunately melted. Something tells me this town is more of a winter destination. We found this very nice campground hill called Mary Helmy Camping, but it is like 10 p.m., so there's no one at the office. And for just a few hours tonight, I don't think it is worth it, so we're just gonna boondock again. Now we found this parking spot with this beautiful sunset coming up at some point. It is almost uh, midnight here as the sun begins to set. But don't worry, it'll be back by 2 a.m. or so. So that's the way it is here in these high latitudes. Tomorrow morning, we'll continue the journey south and we're going to stop again by Oulu, then Vasa, Rauma, Nantali, Turku and eventually back to Helsinki. <laughs> 